from there. Hello, Maria. Yes. <laughs> fantastic. By the way, I've started recording. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Fantastic. So, so Geeta, do you want to introduce what we're doing and? Yes. And yes, I am. I'll, okay. I'll step in later in. Yeah. So, um, so we'll be we'll be um, no more than an hour here today, and um, we've got yes, sex happening um, on the fifteenth of June. Uh, everyone knows it's at the London, the Park Plaza in Victoria. Um, we also uh, okay. So the point, the whole point of this webinar is to. Um, introduce each other as a group but also go through some key points on um, the day I'll be very quick on those and introduce um, the speakers to you Bilal hey Claire how you doing she's there um, hi so so we're going to introduce so I want to introduce uh, you as well Bilal um, Bilal is our sponsor for um, Yes, X, and he's going to be with us for uh, up until the end of this year uh, as our as our uh, sponsor for public speaking. Um, we, you know, we uh, we're delighted to have him on board. He's got so much experience; you wouldn't even uh, you can't even contemplate it. Um, I believe he's just uh, been uh, commissioned to work with uh, anyone who knows Roger Hamilton um from uh it used to be tigram but i think it's the wealth masters is that right uh, crystal crystal circle they call it but yeah wealth dynamics well yeah. that wealth dynamics uh, yeah. crystal circle he's done um uh i think it's a swiss bank you're going to be working with soon yeah, uh, so but he's worked with many many corporate companies uh, as well as royalty on teaching them how to uh how to be a good public speaker um so i think he's uh, definitely the right person for us to be able to um, support you guys uh, and give you tips so the idea of today is to um give you a little bit of a structure of the day uh, for bilal to uh, maybe take some questions probably right and understand what you're going to be talking about uh, and then take some questions. It's not, he's not going to train you to public speak. It's impossible to do that within this time limit, but he's going to give you some um, uh, pointers and some guidance so that you could, you know, you could be even better at what you're going to deliver on that sun, on that Saturday. Um, so uh, it's next Saturday, just to let you know, registration is at 8.30. Um, we, we're going to start at nine o'clock um, and then we'll have you guys coming on as Sabila will introduce um, himself on the day. He'll uh, pump you up a little bit on the day um, and then you'll have a 15 minute slot. Okay. And then after your 15 minute slot, the timing is going to be really precise. So if you are running behind, you're going to be stopped at 15 minutes. So it's a good time to practice your um, presentation timings, okay? And I've seen people in the past where they haven't done this, even our own speakers sometimes, and you've probably witnessed it, mm. where they've had to rush the end of the um, end of their talk. And sometimes the end of the talk is ev everything that ties everything together. So it's really important to get that part um, in there. So uh, after the 15 minutes, we got four really, we got top judges. Uh, Bilal's gonna be a, a judge. Um, we've got Carl Pearsall as a judge. We have a lady called Shay Ali. Some of you may know Shay, some of you may not. Shay runs um, a, a company called Inspired Events, Inspired Talks. Mm -hmm. So um, she, and there, I think they're in, in about three or four uh, uh, cities uh, and in a couple of countries in Europe. So she's going to give, um, uh, she's going to be one of the judges and also somebody you may or may not know him. His name's Dr. Voice. Uh, he's a, a voice coach. He has uh, worked with many superstars, someone you may know as um, Sam Smith. Um, so the, the whole point of the feedback, the judges are actually going to give you feedback. 
okay? So I'm gonna give you some great feedback and um, one, one, maybe two things that you could do better at, okay? Um, so that next time you, you know, go on stage, that you take that on board and, and are able to do a better talk or even better talk because it's going to be great anyway um so um uh, and then what's going to happen they're going to uh, they're going to give you some feedback and then at the, by the end of the day uh we're gonna everyone's a winner uh but there's going to be one or two people that are even more winners okay um and and the idea is that we want to reward we want to reward some of the best talks but can i just say I know all of them are going to be great. Uh, I did it last year and there was so much I learned last year on, on the talks that were given that I still put into practice. And those people that I learned from didn't uh, actually, uh, they weren't the winner, but they gave so much value, okay? Um, and all the videos, by the way, um, that we, we actually are going to record it, they will be on YouTube. So there's going to be quite a lot of promotion of you over the next two weeks and after as well. Um, so we, so we aim to finish around 4.35 PM. Okay. Um, and if you want to mingle after there's going to be time to mingle. Okay. Any questions so far? Yeah. Um, so I've got two things. I'll start off with the one that's bugging me. So I haven't finished writing my speech yet. Um, how I do stuff is usually I write something and then it's like it's not right and then I write it again and then I write it again until it feels better but like I've had another idea so I submitted my title in my video about having like voices in your head and that's really relevant but then what's come up for me over the past weeks is stuff about boundaries respecting your boundaries and what's the difference between having a boundary and having a barrier and it's like can I change it or is it too late or can I like um can I, can I, can I do something or can I just, or do I have to like kind of try and get that into my original talk? Is that something? Which... Okay. I personally don't mind you changing it. You will have a, um, I'm going to say you'll have a deadline by, uh, if you, uh, yeah, I would say a week before. The only reason why is because we're going to put your titles on, on our booking page and then people will have an expectation. So um, I would say give yourself, an, you know, if you can finalise by the end of next week, that would be great. Okay. Um, and like, secondly, so what, because you're not going to train us in public speaking now, obviously, but what is the criteria that judges are looking for when they're judging us? Okay. So the criteria, some of the criteria we used um, last time was authenticity. Okay. And just allow yourself to be vulnerable, okay? Um, uh, so authenticity, vulnerability, um, uh, your ability to engage, okay? And some of you may have experience in this, some of you won't. I think the most engaging part that I've ever felt is when somebody is um, not in their head, they're in their heart, okay? And when they're in, and I'm sure Bilal will kind of give you some more tips on this, okay? So I don't want to take any way, anything away from that. But I, I would, I would say, um, in fact, you know what? I, I'll, I'll, I'll put that on the post if that's okay. Um, rather than being a bit vague about that, um, I'll put that on the post so that you guys have an idea of. Thank you for asking that question. An idea of what to, what's the criteria. Yeah. Well, just, just to add to that, Geet, if I may, um, Zainab, one of, the, one of the big things as, as speakers, and I'm a professional speaker myself, I have been for the last 15 years, I'm a paid speaker. Speakers are, are paid by their impact on their audience. That's what you're paid by. And the greater the impact your talk makes, the greater the, both, both the monetary reward, but also your career. And the reason I should say that is, is people often will start to get very technical with speaking and say they have to do this, they have to do this, they have to do this. It's, it's all fine to have a criteria, but fundamentally, the big envelope, the big overarching theme, if you like, is impact. What is your audience impact? How will your audience feel? 
What will they see? What will they understand? Do they get your message? Will they take action on your message? That's fundamentally what we mean by impact. And then your content, your delivery style, the clarity, the confidence that you demonstrate, your structure, all those things come into play and they all point towards the end thing, which is impact, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, great, great question. Thank you for that. Mm. Um, anybody else have any questions about the day before I uh, um, invite, maybe uh, Bilal, Bilal did ask a question about what you're going to talk about. Um, so any other questions about the day, which is really about more about the structure of the day, um, which I'll get involved in? No? Okay, right, so Bilal. Okay. Okay, well, f first of all, guys, um, lovely to be speaking to you all. I know that uh, Palmer, you are driving, I can see. I hope that you're not distracted. Don't worry too much, just listen in. Um, and it's lovely to see you, Maria and Claire and Zainab. Um, so to, to give myself um, a, cu a couple of minutes just to explain, so first of all, thank you, Geeta, for putting this together. And yes, group, it's an absolutely awesome opportunity, guys. Um, if you are all first-time speakers, mm -hmm. I, I can see that. Um, just give me a wave if you're first-time speaker. Zainab, I'm presuming, is it the first time that you're on stage? Um, I've been in Toastmasters for a year. Okay, okay so, awesome. So you've been not at this stuff. scale. So. Not at this scale, okay. And Claire? No, I've never spoken in public before at all. Okay, so it's first time for Claire. Um, Palmer, you're driving. But give me a wave if you are first time. Yes, you're giving me a wave. Is it the first time? No, never spoken before. Never spoken before. Wow. Okay. She has. She has Spoke. spoken before. I have spoken. I have spoken before. Okay. I have and, and, spoken. Have yeah. you been on large stages, Palmer? Yeah, I've done quite a few. So, um, yeah, Familiar but it'll be territory. great to do it at the yes. Well, okay. yeah. Yeah, but you know you always get nervous don't you because you do. it's something different and, and exciting but um yeah yes. i think it's a great challenge and i feel honored I feel very okay. excited awesome awesome <laughs> and it's great great to say, say say what you just said because i'm gonna build on that uh palmer so that's wonderful and maria first time for you yes first time okay yes. okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna begin just by sharing something very personal guys and that is i haven't always been a speaker so in fact, a lot of my life, my previous life, I was terrified. I was somebody who would hide away, who would think about them, uh, the, the audience as haunting me and judging me. And I would think to myself so much so that I'd become a mind reader. So when I become a mind reader, I would literally be in my own head, worried about what they're thinking. And that would literally take away all my speaking power. Does that make sense? Yes. So for a lot of my speaking career, and I'm talking about before being, before being a professional speaker, I was in industry, I was working in the civil service, I was in leadership, I was having to speak in meetings, sometimes presentations, and I would hate it, I would detest it. But there was something inside of me that told me that this needs to be a, 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 a point in my life, a focus in my life, where I need to overcome this hurdle and this fear. And... And often that fear would cripple me. I just described it would make me think about the judgment. It would make me think about the self-consciousness. It confused my message. Um, and, and things like um, Toastmasters, speaking clubs are great opportunities to get yourself started and absolutely brilliant in terms of just building the practice blocks. The real world situation is often quite different because audiences are more complex. So as you start to continue in your journey, you need to keep on investing in your learning and your experience. But here's what I, I want to share with you guys and, and, and all of you who are listening and will be listening later on. One of the interesting things is this idea of fear and this mm -hmm. idea that when, when fear controls us, we often behave in certain manners and we have, we have instinct that kicks in. Our memory can sometimes go blank um, and we can trip on our words. What was interesting, it was, I think it was one person, I think it was um, Palmer who said she's spoken before and she's quite excited. And the interesting thing is, often fear and excitement are very, very similar in terms of the impact on the body and the way we respond to the stimuli. And what I want all of you guys over the next, I think you've got between now and the 15th, if that's right, Gita, yeah? Yeah, two weeks, yeah. So you've got two weeks. And I want you to get really, really good at just entering into the fear zone, but being comfortable with exploring it. And that means 
maybe practicing in front of the mirror to start with, maybe practicing with a couple of friends, maybe inviting other people around you and just getting into that zone. And you don't need to do more than a couple of minutes, to be dead honest with you. You don't need to practice the entire A to Z, but it's literally getting comfortable with what is uncomfortable. And that's a really, really important strategy because the more you get exposed to that response, the more familiar you are and you can start to re re-engage yourself from a different perspective. Um, one of one of my one of my super tips, and I think this is this is something I coach my clients, my high end clients in when they're preparing for professional speaking gigs, is you need to have certain rituals and approaches that help you manage those initial nerves. So on on the day, for example, and I want to take your your own strategies first, and I'm going to give you one or two that you can implement there and then. What do you do when you're feeling apprehensive? Geet, I'm going to kick off with you. When you're having to go on the yes group stage, for the first time, I'm imagining it must have been quite nerve-wracking. I'm imagining it's still, it's, it's still kind of you know, nerve-wracking and exciting at the same time. But the first time, what, what, what went through your mind and what went through your thinking? Okay, initially, um, for me, um, is... And actually, I'm glad you asked that question because I do a lot of work with Tony Robbins um, as a trainer. And we have to speak in front of groups of 60, 70 people very regularly. And one of the things that um, used to hold me back was um, going up and speaking is, um, will they like me? Mm. Yeah. So, and that was my fear. Will they, will, will they accept me? Um, and when I first became, when I became chair of the London Yes Group, um, when I had to do the first MC in, uh, yeah, yeah. I had, that was big because I, my thing was, oh my God, I, I, I have to be like somebody else. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I have, you know, um, Ian, Ian Young, Alan Plainhands, uh, Harry Singer and you know uh, Peter Sage and all of those things I was, I was like oh my god I have to be like them right yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so you know you've got all these things going on in your mind and uh, my first one was I have to say yeah if I go back and watch that video it was it was quite but I did it right um, so I think it, the fear is always the fear of judgment and and for me it's always been will they accept me I've let that go personally, uh, uh, you know, because I've had to do it over and over again, not just in at the Yes Group, but also in the Tony Robbins environment. Um, however, um, anytime you speak, that still comes up, okay? But I, I, I'm observant about it, and you, you were going to talk about messages. Sorry, Zainab, you were talking about the voices in your head I, I'm very um, uh, observant about those voices in the head now and I, I reframe deframe break it down and change what's been said when yeah. I go up and yeah. I practice yeah yeah absolutely so, practice, so it's practice, really practice. insightful and I, and I think because as a leader and as, as, as one of the leaders at the Yes Group London it's it's I think it's it's comforting for everyone else listening, no doubt, and also for anyone who joins us later on on the recording because there's so many people in the professional space. And it's not just yourself, Gita, but there's in fact hundreds, thousands, millions of people on stages who are terrified and they look like they're really comfortable. Yeah. They look like they are literally owning that space and yet they're terrified. And there's and equally, there are people who then move on and they, and they start to, they, as we call it, graduate on their speaking journey. Mm -hmm. And they're able to get comfortable. And it's important to recognize it's a speaking journey. So, for example, when I started out in the speaking space 15 years ago, I was terrified and I was really bad. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm in a different space. And I, mm -hmm. I view it as excitement. I view it as an opportunity. And I do have approaches and methods that I automatically move into. So even if I'm having a bad day, or for example, guys, it's Ramadan at the moment. Bilal's not fa not Bilal is fasting. He's not eating and drinking. So I'm tired. And I told Gita before I came on this call, I said I was woken up at 8 a.m. by somebody um, somebody's car alarm, and I couldn't go back to bed. And today was meant to be my my um, late 
late, uh, late, late um, sleep, sleeping, lying. Um, so, however, when I'm speaking about something that I, I love and I love what I do, and this is something that I'm fascinated by, it is a passion, it's a purpose for me, I dip into my natural energy. And so it's really, really important to understand that all of you are going to be speaking from a place of passion. And if you're not, it's worth connecting in and reconnecting and refreshing in your own mind before you go on that stage. Because why are you doing this? Why are you getting on that stage? Why are you wanting to serve those people? Ask yourself, refresh that, those questions in your own mind so that when you're going on there, you've got an extra layer of power. You've got a layer of impact and you're able to put your purpose ahead or, or higher up than your fear. And that's the really, really interesting concept, guys. Because when we are more clear, when we have clarity of where we're going, we stop worrying about what could happen. We now have a greater level of focus. There's a greater level of vision. There's a greater level of energy and connection in serving. And that's super, super powerful. So it's a really good tip just to explore uh, as, as future speakers. Um, one of the other practical things, if I, if I may, uh, that, I, uh, that I coach people in, is I, I ask them to get into what we call an animated state, a speaking state. Because when you're speaking on stage, you're not just walking on there and having a conversation. You can do that, and that's great, and it can come across very authentic. But if you start off with a conversation and you've got a, a crowd that's buzzing and cheering and welcoming you, and you say, hi, it's Bill Al and I'm going to talk about public speaking, and you guys are going to be enthralled by it, and I'm just going to have a monotone voice, which is going to carry on like this, and <laughs> you guys are now going to go into a journey of self-discovery and think about what you're going to cook for dinner. Mm. Um, does this mm. make sense? They'll all stop it and behave yourself. So, so there, there is an opportunity for you to get more animated, and mm. it's really important to do that, especially as speakers, especially as communicators. So how do you do that? The thing that I, I tend to, in, in our workshops, one of the secrets that we, um, we, we, I'm happy to reveal here is we will get people to play games. We'll get people to, to pretend their messages is being shared with, I don't know, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, and they will practice this so they'll get more animated. And you might think, to yourself, well, I can't really do that. What you can do is you can have lots of micro-conversations before you get into that space. Before you get into that space on the 15th of June, you can have lots of small conversations with strangers, the train, uh, people on the train, people on the underground, people on your Uber taxi, people at security, people at the hotel staff, the reception staff, other delegates, other family members and friends. The more conversations you have before you speak on stage, the more relaxed you will be. Mm. It's a really, really professional, uh, powerful professional tip because what you're effectively doing is you're effectively loosening up the muscles um, around your um, ar around your face. Your your uh, vocal muscles are being relaxed as well. So you have lots of conversation. And if you are if you're really savvy, you'll even practice sharing your message with people so that by the time you're on stage, you're in the zone. It's a really powerful method that I use, well, I've used over years and years and years, and that is if I'm speaking on stage, I don't mind letting the secret out. Because by the time you're on stage, your energy, your adrenaline, and everything else, the, the atmosphere, will change that talk. Um, I think it was Zainab who was saying that, that you're writing your talk. Is that right, Zainab? Okay, so writing your talk, is great to get your ideas down. What I will say is the way we write and the way we speak are two different things. Okay? So how we write, often if we read a book out, and if I, if I, if I, um, I don't know if, I, if I've got a book in front of me, um, all the information, techniques, skills, and concepts contained within the publication of the nature of general comment only. We do not speak like that. Okay? Mm. So, so reading, I'm just reading a script out from a, from a book and the way we write, and often, and that's quite an extreme version, but when we're writing a script or writing a speech, it's great to help you with structure. What I will say is practice, try to practice 
your message, just like you practice, you don't practice your conversation with your friends. I, I, I'm assuming, guys. Yes, you don't practice before you go and have a coffee with somebody. Okay, so no one's like me. I practice before I go for a coffee. But, the, but you need to be able to just to have, yeah, sometimes, yeah, difficult conversation. But there's generally most of us will just relax and have a conversation, right? And what I, what I would strongly urge all of you guys on this call and those joining later on is feel free to script it to an extent, but then move away from your script. Nobody else knows your script. Mm. No one else knows your script. And it's really worth emphasizing that. I have to say, um, that is one of the most comforting things that I learned as well is that you know when you know you know your subject palmer's got some tunes on mate palmer's got some <laughs> tunes okay so you house. know your script um and they don't have the book they don't have the book okay so if you go off you know on when you're doing your talk and uh, it goes off uh you forget something it's okay we don't know what you're gonna. We don't know what's coming ahead, and you can make up, make it up, as long as it's on they par with. What, they don't know what they don't know, do they? Gita? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, you know that's that's really powerful. And also the the thing about um, you just mentioned there, Bilal, about um, having those conversations with many people about your subject, and I think that I've not heard that before. Uh, and I think that's that's um, something I'm going to use. I've never, you know, so, so you're comfortable with it. You're comfortable talking about it when you get on stage. We, we use this. We, we have a, a module in one of our advanced speaking programs um, on humorous speaking. And one of the things that we say is, is you need to be able to test your jokes out again and again and again. When I did stand up gigs and believe it or not, I did stand up gigs many years ago. Um, and I used to get on the stand-up circuit and, and one of the things I used to do is I used to literally tell the jokes or, or use those lines in the hairdressers and the barbers and my hairdresser would be cutting my hair and I'd be telling the jokes and I'd stop and I'd look at him and he'd carry on cutting the hair. I'd go, okay, that was shit. All right, we'll move on. But the thing is, you, you are constantly testing your material and you know, the beauty of communication is you've got opportunities all the time. Every conversation you have, you've got an opportunity. Um, and, and it goes back to the point which I, I do want to emphasize, which is get good at your material. I walk the talk. You've got to be able to be good at your material. If you're an expert in your, every space you're sharing, that confidence comes through in your message. And, and live it, you know, make a concerted effort over this next 15 days to be living your own material. Whatever your message is, live it and practice it. Because often we can get caught up in, in, in life and yes, we have a mission, we have a purpose, but we get distracted by life. Life happens, you know, you, you, you have that car alarm like I had earlier in the morning when I was meant to be sleeping in. It's not bugging me, honestly. But the thing is, you need to be able to be on point and use every single day every single hour now from now to the, the event just to practice um, implementing what you preach. That's really, really important. And I'll, I'll move on if that's okay, guys. But I hope that was useful. Is there any questions on that particular, those last few tips before I do move on? No, just if your joke was good, then your hairdresser would have messed up your haircut. Exactly. <laughs> that was the main thing, Zayn, but that was deliberate. That was deliberate. It was, I was just, just looking after my hair. Uh, but yeah, so so there was um but he's he's a bit of a clown himself so you know so so next saturday we might even get a bit of stand-up we're all going to be doing stand-up yeah yeah, yeah. But, but, again, but, but again it's 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 all part of the, the the holistic approach so for example we have a storytelling um keynote storytelling uh, retreat that we do so we help people develop their story of their life the story that they were meant to share with the world and at that particular retreat, one of the things that people say is to me all the time, a lot of my masterminders, they say, Bilal, stories always happen to you. My life is not that interesting. I don't tend to have these stories. And I say, okay, so what happened on the bus today? And they tell this magnificent story about how they were shortchanged or how there was this massive brawl on the bus and they were the hero or whatever it was. And the thing is, stories are everywhere. and you have phones, you have the devices like this, the iPhone, I'm, a, I'm an iPhone man. But if you were to 
be literally putting something in the notes section every single day and saying, this is, this happened. This is a record of this happened. And then later on, you can find meaning in those stories, which are attached to your purpose, attached to your message. And you're able to use them as anecdotes, as metaphors, as little mini stories again and again and again. So it's a really powerful tool um, straight out of one of the storytelling uh, retreats where we ask people to be story ready so that you're able to understand life from a different lens, where that lens of recording stories, just like we're recording this webinar right now. We're recording a story that's taking place live. We heard Gita's story on how she went on that stage, how she's a Tony Robbins trainer. You heard my micro story, a micro story about my, my experience as a young man in the civil service who was terrified of public speaking, whose words would stutter and stammer, my mind would go blank, I'd feel the heat across my body. I'd see all those people staring at me. I'd be looking at them. They'd be looking at me thinking, who's this idiot? I'd be looking at them thinking, I am the idiot. And it was horrible. Okay, There's a mini story there, guys. Mm -hmm. makes sense? And you can see how powerful this is as a method. So become story ready. Don't be afraid of recording what's happening in your life or what's happened in your life. And don't be afraid to be creative. You know, you're not there to do an exam and people are not going to walk into your um, life story. I, I've, I've worked with a lot of royal family members. Not to this, de to this day have I had somebody come up to me and say, oh, Bilal, can you, can you verify that, please? I've got video evidence of it, but no one's actually come up to me and say, oh, can you verify it? You know, people aren't bothered about it. They're bothered about your experience. So how, when, I, when you tell a story, when you share a story, they want to experience it with you. And it's really important to just, be as vivid and descriptive in that. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to something else. And if you've got your pens ready, this is a super tip, um, Gita, that I'm going to leave every, and, and do feel free to, to take this. So a lot of this content you, you probably will never hear because this, this is Public Speaking Academy content, and it's what we've helped um, tens of thousands of people, mainly in the exec space, but also in the public space, help them overcome their fear and, and, and really thrive on stage. So earlier on, I said there's this concept of speaking state. I, when you're a speaker, the way you communicate, your voice, your tonality, the volume, the impact of your voice is very different to conversation. They are similar, but they are not twins. They are cousins, as I describe them. And it means that as a speaker on stage, you need to be able to slow your pace down at certain points and change your voice, tweak it. And what I mean by that is I, I ask you to think about the Martin Luther King effect when he said, I have a dream. He didn't I say, I have a dream. He said, I have a dream. <laughs> Extending the words. Does that make sense? He extended the words. Ex not extended. Extended the words. Elongated <laughs> the words. Not elongated. Elongated. And what that does is it's a, it's a method that's really, really powerful. Professional pacing. It's not, you don't use the entire sentence and say, hello, I am Bilal. <laughs> you don't do that unless you're selling ice cream or something. But there's, there's, uh, there's a method of extending certain words which allows you to stop or, or slow down the pace. And it's a form of pausing, professional pacing. I, you're able to control your breath, therefore breathe deeper and control the nerves and anxiety, but at the same time, you're able to make greater impact in the way I'm doing right now. Because when you're slowing the pace or controlling the pace, I would say, you're not just slowing it down, you're controlling it, so you're varying it, you're able to make greater impact on your audience. And the perception of confidence, the perception of confidence is heightened. So your audience feel you're in greater control. Think about the leaders that you've seen. Speak. See, think about some of the most powerful speakers. When they stand on a stage and they say, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to share a voice that is super powerful. I'm going to share a voice, a message that is super powerful. If I'm saying it like that, that's, that's pretty powerful. If I'm now going to say, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to share a message that's really, really powerful, super powerful. It's going to be really powerful. You can see the difference in the contrast, right? So 
becoming good at controlling your pace will do a number of things. It will create a perception of confidence. You will then feel more confident and that will become a self-fulfilling cycle on stage. And you can do that and test it everywhere in your day-to-day -day life, in meetings, wherever it is. It's a very, very powerful tool. Slowing that pace down and elongating the word creates word control. It means you're less likely to trip over your words. So think about the BBC news journalists the TV journalist, this is Bill Al Jamil, BBC News. Can you see I've just done that? Reporting for Geeta Taylor in London, Zoom call. You can see I'm doing the same thing that the BBC TV journalists are doing, i.e., controlling our voice and breaking the words up that prevent the stuffing and stammering. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. And the key thing here is, whilst you're slowing the pace down, you're able to be finding the remaining parts of your sentences that you had forgotten when you were on stage. Because guess what? The biggest fear within the public speaking space, the fear within the fear, is losing your train of thought and going blank, your brain freezing. Who's been there? Yeah. Right, we've all been there. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the way, there's lots of messages use when you learn stuff from myself and i will educate more as as our relationship grows and it's a speaking journey but one of the tools of many is to be able to slow the pace down because when you're slowing the pace down you're able to find your thoughts you now you're working from what you've just shared and you're able to find meaning to add on to the last sentence Tommy, you're multitasking. Oh my God. <laughs> you're doing well, Palmer. You're multitasking. <laughs> don't, I don't, don't know where I'm, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to get my. Okay, I'm trying to go time. to this. <laughs> I'm trying to go to this event for my kids. I've got my kids in the oh. car. Oh. And um, I'm completely lost. And they're like, will you just focus on the road? And I'm like, I'm trying to focus on you. Oh, no, no, Palm, it's a recording. It's a recording as well. So don't, don't put yourself yeah, in. Yeah, no, but I like to hear it. But I like to hear it the first time and yeah. then I absorb it. Fantastic, fantastic. So. Thank you so much, Barbara. <laughs> yeah, thank, you for, thank you for your tips. They're amazing. They're really well, good. Because it's I, true. You, you've got to be really like pumped up and excited rather than nervous. But you, everyone feels nervous. It's normal. It's human and it's, uh, it makes you more, it actually makes you more human and makes you, it, more, does. it makes you a lot more, um, I would say, from a human perspective, it makes you connectable. People can connect with you as a consequence. Exactly. <laughs> I think I'm better. they're getting really angry with me. Okay, okay, okay. I'll let you focus. Let this, you focus. this is the real Palmer. My kids get angry with me. They're like, I don't care what you're trying to do. I'm going to listen. Okay, you pause. You carry on. Carry on. Okay, so so um, lovely to see. So I um, yeah, I, I was talking about the idea of pausing and, and pacing and making sure that you're able to execute that control that voice control and also the value that it has in the confidence space the value it has in terms of finding your words and the value it has in terms of making greater levels of engagement so it serves all the purposes of the speaker that one method and one technique um one of one of the, the other things that i tend to encourage my my folk to always work on is to have a central set of questions in your mind that you can use at any point. So when you get lost inside your talk, or say you're talking about something and you think, where am I meant to now go? What's meant to happen next? It's okay to use a rhetorical device. So it's okay to recap, and it's okay to say, so what does this all mean? What is the significance of this particular message? Why did I share this with you? Well, here's what I want to share with you next. When you use a rhetorical device like that, and what the rhetorical device, um, those of you who, who, who may have heard this before, is it allows you to just literally pause, freeze frame, freeze the film, and then put a helicopter view on what's just happened. Does that make sense, guys? Mm. It's a really useful tool just to slow the pace right down because often when people are sharing something, and even on webinars, you know, people do it. They can get really passionate and they're experts in the topic. And they, off they go, they rattle it off it. They stop one, step two, step three, step four, step five. And before you know it, they've lost their train of thought or they've lost their audience. 
Yeah. No, it's great. This, those are some really great tips there. Um, anyone have any questions so far? Mm. You know, like when you learn a talk. So wait, I'm gonna. I'm going to try and talk slowly now, but when you learn a talk and you practice it, I find that I really like to memorize it. So I, I type, but then I remember do it in the way that I speak. Yeah, so yeah. I don't, I, I talk how I talk, but some people do it off the cuff. Some people memorize main points yeah i actually really like to memorize Brilliant. everything and sometimes people say oh no that makes it stiff but actually i find that it doesn't because it makes me feel like you know what now i'm not worried about that part so much i can concentrate yeah. on my body language and like really look at people like not in a creepy yeah. way but yeah. in a way with you know i can connect focus on connecting with people and just sharing my message and, and the nervousness yeah tips into excitement rather than oh shit what am I going to say kind I, think, of thing. I think you're spot on Zainab I think you know one, one of the big ethos that I've always worked to um, and our organisations always it's one of one of our, our ten principles and um, one of the principles is, is learn to unleash your best voice and your best message learn to unleash that and the way you will unleash that is through being you it's not going to be you being Bilal uh, not you being being somebody else or another pro speaker. You're gonna you, you can model from people. You can borrow stuff from people, and you can borrow a technique. And you can the whole essence is you will use what works for you specifically, and to get the best result from you. So it's absolutely okay to, to do that. Um, I think I think fundamentally, when when the best speakers in the world, and I've mentored and coached some of the the best. Um, professional speakers as well in my, in my career and one of the t tips and techniques that we would um, that I learned over the years was the idea of super presence so when a speaker is super present they're able to respond to stuff that's happening live inside the room if that makes sense and you know to stand-up comedians do this all the time the very very good speakers stand-up com comics are excellent speakers because something can happen and they will reference it there and then. Does that make sense? You'll see it happen. And so, for example, just being present, and I was being present in this webinar, so when our lovely friend in the car, uh, Palmer, was having her moments, I was referencing it, and I think that's part of life, okay? Mm -hmm. Pulling people through conversation and having that engagement, and that's being present. So, um I think, I think the, the key thing is the way we construct our talks, it can be through the written form, it can simply be speaking at first. You all have um, voice recorders, no doubt, on your phones. You can record the voice, you can play it back and see how it sounds and test it, and then maybe script it. Use a combination of devices. That's what I tend to recommend a lot of my students and delegates mm. do. But you're going to find what works for you, and that's absolutely fine either way. Mm. Uh, and yeah. I think also is um, as you as you do more and more and more of this, Zainab, you might find that your style changes in how you do things. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So you, you, it's just. A, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, it's interesting because we we it, the the speaking space is one of those spe spaces where the more you. The more you learn, the more you realize you don't know because it's such a vast space. And I've had CEOs of organizations, you know, Financial Times. I've had the editor of the FT. I've had um, people who are sales speakers on big stages. And we've had people from software organizations who are trained and seriously, seriously big players. And they've come on board and they said, I, I literally cannot believe what I've learned in this space because the reality is we will often get into a habit and we'll think, okay, I'm fine and I'm content and that's my space. But reality mm -hmm. is your potential is way, way beyond that. And mm -hmm. the impact, and if you imagine yourself in a space, you know, a couple of years from now where you're making significant impact and you're a completely different speaking personality to what you once started in. And just because you have an identity in that space at the moment doesn't mean that you can't have a new identity further down the line it'll still be authentic you it'll still it'll still be your true message and your true essence but you're learning the skills 
that put you onto the world class stage. And there's absolutely no reason that any of you in this space can't hit the world stage. My mission, if if I talk about um, my organization's mission, is to give the voice to the people who've got a mission, who've got a purpose, who've got a story. And we're giving them the tools to literally make world impact. And it's the one tool that changes everything. You know, if you think about um, all the people, all the movements, think about politics, history, think about religion, think about business, think about the, the, the coaching industry is made, it, it's very DNA speaking. Mm-hmm. So this, I think that the key thing is to be pumped up and yeah, to feel, feel that excitement, um, mm-hmm. to use some of these tools and techniques to, to, to test yourself and, and be okay um, guys, and I'm, I'm going to reveal a little bit of a secret for myself. So, so I, I do three day events, um, and when I do a th- give me a three day event, I don't really need to worry. I don't need to prepare. I think Nottingham University have called me up to do a gig on the 17th of um, June, Peter. Mm. Um, Nottingham Uni, I think it's about 200 people, mm. and, and and this is recorded, so I've got to be careful. Don't ever share this, ladies and gents. But here, here's, here's a secret: I will probably prepare 20 minutes for that one day gig. It'll be 20 minutes and I'll be speaking all day. Mm. But, but if you make me speak for 20 minutes, no, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something even more interesting. Yeah. Give me 20 minutes to speak. Like I had to speak for 20 minutes at a TEDx talk. I did a TEDx talk recently um, at Leeds University. Uh, it was my TEDx. I had 20 minutes. I, I needed a month to prepare for that. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you can give me three days. I can speak for three days. Give me two days. No problem. Give me one. And this is a very, this is a, I, I've been speaking 15 years, guys. I'm, I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm a established force in the speaking world. But you give me 20 minutes. I've got to prepare for, I've got to prepare for a month. And in my time schedule, my life is literally, you know, we have Sunday masterminds. It's, it is nonstop. Mm. A bit like Gita, you know, we don't stop. No. Uh, but so. it's, I, I agree with you. It's harder. The shorter the time you've got, because so, you've got to make an impact there in you that go. time. Yeah. It's a lot, lot harder. And, and in fact, yes. I wanted yes, to ask about that, actually. Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Maria. I just, go ahead. I just wanted to ask about that. How many points do you think we should cover? Because 15 minutes isn't a long time. So it flies by. My mega tip, guys, and this is for all of you, is, is in 15 minutes, and you might now think, Bill, are you going to make me read right my bloody speech? But here's what I'm going to say. The less is more. Mm-hmm. Do not be afraid. Even if you had one big theme, one big message, one big wrapper to contain everything in, don't be afraid of having one main point. And that doesn't mean that you literally say, you know, here's my one point and I'm going to repeat the one point again and again and again for a few minutes. No, it means that you're going to shine light from different angles, different stories, different examples, different bits of evidence, different opinions, different experiences. We're all pointing to the same message. Does that make sense, Maria? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. The less really is more. People will only remember your main theme. What did you stand for? A year from now, um, I have people who come up to me and I designed the, it was my, it's my sig- signature method. I didn't learn this uh, method of pacing from anyone. Um, professional pacing was designed by Public Speaking Academy years ago and we've tested it and we pioneered it. And I can go to different parts of the world where I've trained people in Indonesia and in Middle East, in China, and people will say, you know what, the one thing I remember was that when you can exert control on your pace, you can exert control on your talk. Somebody else in the Middle East will say, when you exert control on your pace, you create the perception of confidence, and that's everything. When you exert control on pace, you exert control on your memory. That's everything, Bill. Do you see how everything is centered on one nugget? And um, if you can bring your one key principle to your talk and then hang everything else from that, that's a great, great method. Mm. Yeah, less is more. Less is more. Summed up beautifully by Gita. Less Mm. is more. Less is more. Three words. (laughs) Claire, do you you have anything you want to ask? Um, You said something, you were talking before about the impact and not losing your audience as well was a phrase you used. I just, um, I mean, you've touched on this about the passion and the way you use your voice and the pauses, but 
Are there any other tips of how to really engage? Because I wonder about eye contact. Absolutely, like, absolutely. You know where to look. Yeah, I've yeah. Let's no let's idea. talk about that. Let's talk about that. So, so as speakers, often we're, we're we're faced with lots of lots of pairs of eyes looking at looking at us, and I can promise you that as when you're on the other side of the stage, you can literally make eye contact with everyone pretty quick. It's something that's a skill, but you can literally make personable eye contact, hold it for two or three seconds, and speak to those people as individuals. Don't speak to them as an audience. One of the, there's lots of tips, guys, that you can read on, on our blog, by the way, publicspeakingacademy.co.uk. You've got loads of blogs that I've written, and it goes deep into lots of material. So you can, if you've got time, scan through some of the blogs, and you'll see me talking about all of this stuff in great depth. Um, but yeah, hold the eye contact for two to three seconds and literally don't be afraid of holding that connection because, you know, 99% of people in that audience want to share, want to, want to share good vibes with you. Most people, most people actually want you to succeed. The blank face that people, I call this laptop face. Laptop face is what you will get when you've got, um, people in an audience, which is it. Laptop face is this. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because people are conditioned, especially in today's society, to literally be invisible. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And, and when they're in the audience, they don't, they don't realize that you can see them as speakers. <laughs> if you come to one of my seminars, I will say to people, guys, you best smile because I can see your faces. Yeah. I'll make them smile. Does that make sense? So, so you need to literally understand that you can see everyone and they can see you. Don't be afraid of holding the eye contact two to three seconds. It's the, it's the best level of eye contact because it, any more than that, it just starts to get creepy. Um, any less than that, and it looks like you can't, you can't trust that person. So, and that's you as a speaker. They won't trust you, so you want them to trust you. Yeah. Um, so the eye contact is, 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 and there's different forms of eye contact. You know, we're not going to go deep into this, but there's, there's soft eye contact. There's hard eye contact. There's different forms of eye contact. Um, there's charismatic eye contact, so there's a charisma level, um, and, and, and you can go deep into this. And any of these principles, they're miles deep when you start to uncover and you start to understand the magic behind them. Because people, when, they're in, when they've are in when got inspirational energy, you will notice their eyes change. You will notice this. You'll probably see the guest group speakers. When they're going to a pinnacle, when they're going to a, a crescendo, when they're going to their key point, their key takeaway message that they love and they're connected with, and it's, it's on point their eyes will start to literally change. They'll start mm. to smile. Yeah? And you will see that inside. Of, and, you, and it's something that we, we say a lot of this stuff takes place within, but it, it actually demonstrates and manifests on the outside as well. Um, so, so don't be afraid of using eye contact. Don't be afraid of being able to ask your audience questions. Um, you don't need to always get the answers. It's okay to throw questions out to people. Another thing that I often use is signposts. So when you use words like imagine, I want you to imagine what this feels like. I want you to experience it. It's a really good technique to get people to experience what you're sharing. Um, and it just ups the game again. I think I'm giving too many mega tips, Gita. I yeah. Can't help <laughs> and I was just going to say um, uh, one more thing because I'm going to wrap up in a few minutes. Is um, you know. Work with what you're comfortable with at the moment, okay? Because the worst thing you can do is take advice from many, 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 many people. If you, like yeah. Zainab, you mentioned other people say you should do it like this. Well, if you're not comfortable with doing it that way at the moment, don't do it. Do with, you know, work with what works for you because then you're in your heart, not in your head, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the more you, the more and more, you know, you, you work on your public speaking, you will change your, your uh, tactics will change and that's okay. But um, don't try and change anything at the last minute. <laughs> because a question as well. Yes. Um, what about having slides and things like that? What do you recommend for that? So, so with, with regards to slides, Maria, because you've got 15 minutes, I would say, I'd say no more than, three as a maximum that's my professional uh, okay. tip there because we're not looking at the slides we're looking at you we're, we're wanting to hear your story this is my this is this is from a from a pro speaking um, space um, it's recommended that there's less slides 
because people are the slides people often start to lean into that okay so here we have a professional tip over here and now i'm going to lose myself inside the board and that's that 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 kind of go it detracts from who you are does that make sense mm. um as a, as a speaker i will very rarely use slides very rarely and so it's a good habit just from a from a long-term career perspective if you want to make impact as a speaker use slides by all means but use minimize uh, mm. and try and try if you do use slides um, don't make it word heavy yeah so picture, if you can use pictures, not, not words, pictures yeah. tell a thousand words. Um, yeah. If you use pictures, um, like uh, if you were there on Wednesday, I think Jake did a beautiful yeah. of you using slides. Mm. Um, some really great pictures. All he had is yeah. pictures on there. That's and then awesome. he talked us through those pictures. Um, it helps inspire the, the thought, yeah. doesn't it? And that, 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 should, that should be on the purpose of your slide, really. It should inspire yeah. thought for you and your audience. Yeah, okay, great. reading them. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Steve didn't use any slides. Um, no. That's okay. Yeah. So you again do what you're comfortable with. Yeah. And uh, if you are using slides, by the way, um, guys and girls, there's no guys on here except for Bilal. Um, I'm, I'm loving this, Geek. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I think it's, 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 a, it's a great Saturday. This just as, as good as my Saturdays get. Yep. Yeah. Um, so if you are using slides, um, I really need them all in latest, latest, latest by the 14th. Um, please don't bring them on the 15th in the morning because we're going to line everything up. Um, so when we arrive in the morning, we're ready to go. So when I say 14th, like 5 o'clock, 5 p.m., I've got them. Yeah. Again, again, I'd say, I'd say just, just, just as testimony to what we said earlier on, as speakers, you should... I would, I would start as I mean to go on, guys, and my, my advice to you is from a place of love. I want to see you all go um, fly high, and I want to be able to reference this, this perspective and, and see that you are flying high. So my super advice, bit, a bit of advice is if you can, if you can minimize the slides, if you can, if you can get rid of the slides, I will always go, go for being a speaker. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll put myself out there. Be a speaker first, and the slides can always come in later on. But if you become slide dependent, you're, you're almost using it as a, as a crutch. Um, and I think at this stage of your speaking journey, it's important to just give yourself a good chance, a fighting chance to succeed. And you know, yeah. you're, born, you're born to be special, you're born to be great. You've got a voice inside of you and why shouldn't you? you know, you've got every right to speak, everyone has. Um, and, and so I'm really passionate about that. And I want, I'd love you to all succeed. I mean. I've got my final thing, that, um, Gita. It, it triggered something inside of me that I can share with these guys very, very quickly. In one minute. In one minute, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Prepare for a month and come back. One minute. I will. I will share. I will share within sixty seconds, and that is, so long as you understand this key point, you'll be fine. And that is to connect deeply within the people that need your message. Connect deeply within that because when you're going to operate from a place of service, those people need your message greater than you need your fear. Does that make sense? So yeah. when I started out on my speaking journey, when I started out on the mission with Public Speaking Academy, I knew that I wanted to affect millions of lives of people who are gifted but didn't have the power or the confidence to share that message. And it was my mission to tell them that, one, it's your right that two, there's mechanisms and tools, and three, that they have that gift to succeed. That meant that my fear played second fiddle because now my mission's greater than my fear. Mm. Yeah, does that make, I agree, it's not about you. I mean, I, yeah. mean, I mean, it's not about me when I'm talking. Yeah, it's about the audience, yeah. When your service, when your service mindset kicks, kicks in, guys, you're into the speaking space, um, and then you're literally passion takes over, and you'll go over your sixty seconds like I just did. Brilliant. Okay. Any other questions? Last burning questions. Mm. What about um, audience participation? Do you think you should include the audience? Do you think there's not really much time for that? I think it's a good question, Maria, and, and the, the, the best bit of audience participation that you should do in a 15-minute talk, and if I was to put you black and white rules, which I will at this point, would be literally just 
who thinks who thinks this or does that make sense yes and you're literally one word one response you're not going into open questions mm. so how how long have you been here and somebody starts rabbiting on and on and on <laughs> people will people will you know if you if you're really engaging and um you know as pro, pro speakers we have time limits time is everything so you have to be really really controlled and you guys are in a space where you've got 15 minutes which really in the speaking space is a, not a long time mm. by the time i've introduced myself 15 minutes is over <laughs> so i I hear you. Yeah, Does that make so, sense? Yeah. yeah, don't let anyone take that time away from you. That yeah. Nice. yeah. I, I, if I'm engaging people, I would literally just get hands up or um, it would just be a yes or a no. It'd be a quick response. Yeah. And do we get a timer? Do we get access to see a timer? So mm. you'll be timed. So we'll have, um, like we do it in the S group, you'll be timed down. Okay. So um, uh, I'm not sure what that's going to be because you've got 15 minutes. So it might be, a you know, like 10 minutes, five minutes, one minute, wrap up. Yeah. Yeah, it would make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, I think I, I, again, I, again I, I wouldn't worry too much about time. I don't obsess about time, but just be aware of it because, because if you've practiced your speech and I, I tend to if I'm doing stuff within time limits guys I tend to practice under so I try to deliver my speech within 12 13 minutes and then on the day I relax and I take my time and maybe play with the audience a little bit and that can extend it a couple of minutes so I'm giving myself a buffer that's that's mm -hmm. definitely well well worth um, sharing on when it comes to timings mm -hmm. Well, I'm really um, conscious of timing because <laughs> um, uh, Bilal needs to get some sleep now. Uh, so, um, <laughs> you're woken so, me up now, Gita. I'm woken you up. Yeah, you're inspired. passionate about what you're talking about. Yeah. The, uh, the, 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 the passion, yeah, but yeah. I'm, I'm awake. So you can watch this video again if you wanted to run it back and, and get some tips. Mm. Um, uh, yeah. Otherwise, you know, just go for it now. Um, it's going to be an amazing day. It really is going to be an amazing day. And um, we're going to support each other. Yeah. So, um, you know, let's root for each other. And um, yeah, it, it's going to be great. And if you've got any further questions, in the meantime, we've got the uh, Facebook Messenger group. So feel free to uh, ask questions there. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, brilliant. Great. Thank okay. you. Thank you for being here um, and, and spending this hour. Um, uh, have a lovely weekend. It's going to be, it's, I don't know what it's like up north, but it's beautiful here in the south. It's really warm, Geeta. It's warm yeah. today. It's, it's, yeah, it's, today. It's, it's a lovely day. It's, yeah, been it's, pleasure. A, it's, been, it's been a pleasure to share as well, um, Geeta, and, 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 and everyone. Um, I hope it's been useful for you guys. Yeah, thank you. That was really helpful. Yeah, really useful. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm excited. <laughs> I have to detect that. Thank you. I mean, I've been writing notes as well. So it's been um, really useful. Yeah. Um, tips to just get us started. Yeah. So um, any other things uh, on the messenger and we shall be in touch. Oh, by the way, uh, please go in and register and do your enrollment, please. Yeah, so go online, register on your membership account. Um, everything's set up there. Claire, thank you. I know you've done that already. Um, just go in and, and enroll because I need to get that sorted by this weekend. Yeah? Brilliant. All right. Thank you so much. Have a lovely Thank day. you. Thank Love you. Bye, you guys. See you See soon. See you. Thanks so much. Bye. 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 Bye.